we're now going to have a, a report from Arizona. And, and uh, uh, this guy here, we could not imagine uh, someone who's been more powerful and more effective. You saw the, the Michigas that came into Arizona when they tried to uh, rant and rave about uh, a stolen election. This is the man who turned it around. And John Brakey has shown how much incredible power a single individual uh, can have. And if you'll give us an update on your legislation in Arizona, then we're going to have Myla and Peter and, um, and Ancor. Okay, so John, come on up and uh, just welcome this guy. He's a true hero. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Harvey. Still yeah, we certainly are. It's still zooming. It's still out in there. All right. And it, they have canceled the uh, Oscars for this event. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not going to talk too long or anything, but, uh, you know, I'm grateful to be here. And, I, and to end with what Harvey said, you know, I'm an activist and activist acts. We make things happen. I'm very fortunate to be here with all of you because we get energy from each other as activists. And, you know, as a young man, I heard something that I remembered all my life, and I tell people all the time what a great man John F. Kennedy was when he said that one person can make a difference and everybody should try. I live by that motto. I teach that. You know, I'm out here as an activist, you know, trying to get people to realize how to become a good activist. So I'm out here and I travel the country, do different, I've been in 18 states, and I tell people, that uh, to learn the seven C's, character, capacity, credibility, civility, I can call you bad names real nicely with civility, <laughs> citizenship, country, but the most important one is to be courageous, to stand with your values, with facts and stand up. I had to do that when I decided to go ahead and get involved in the Arizona fraud. And it was a fraud is what it was. But, you know, I know that letting these people just roam around and say all these things and for us on the left just to ignore them is not a solution. You have to engage. And that's what I did. And it was very, very hard because, you know, I was called bamboo breaky. I was uh, mocked. I was death threatened. I was assaulted twice. And not one bit of that ever bothered me. Not one bit of it. But, you know, I'm not here to talk about that. What I'm here to talk about is what did we learn from the fraud? It. This is so important. We learned, me and a guy named Ken Bennett, and I want to tell you who Ken Bennett is. He was the president of the Arizona Senate for four years. He was secretary of state of my state for six years. And, you know, we found ourselves in the same foxhole. And what were we fighting? Grifters, parrot talkers, the best talkers and the worst producers. They don't go up in front of media. They do infra commercials and they lie and they lie. And they're very good at manipulating people who want to follow an authoritarian leader like Trump, which we don't. We follow for values. We go ahead for other things. But anyway, to get right to it, uh, me and this guy, Ken Bennett, got together and we wrote a bill. And, you know, we realized out of that audit, I mean, we call it the Arizona miracle, that our country, and mainly our state right now, we are going to wind up with elections that are, one, transparent, two, trackable, three, publicly verified, and fourth, with the ballot library. The ballot library is how you store ballots. All ballots that come in through an envelope, after they're separated, and made anonymous by disconnecting, and when it drops in the box, we want to marry that ballot to the ballot image. We want ballot images to be released publicly. Yes. Listen, the actual act of voting is the secret process. Counting is a public process. We have a black box. I've been fighting that black box with Mimi Kennedy, a lot of other activists across this country. Uh, a black box is, you don't know how it works inside. We want a system that when your ballot goes to the machine, it takes a picture of it. That picture becomes a public record. We want the ballot and the ballot image married to each other. If you get the images, you add up your own precinct, you should have the right to say, hey, I want to take a look at a couple of these images and I want to match them up against the original because I want to be absolutely sure. All right. 
Because democracy depends upon it. And why? You know, how many people really realize that in 2020, that 80 million people did not vote in this country? Who could have? 80 million. And you know, how many of those millions have joined the Mark Twain party? That's the party that believes if voting made a difference, we wouldn't let you do it. We have to change that. You know, right now, 50 million Americans believe that Trump had his election stolen. Not true. We proved that in Arizona. Okay. We wound up with 360 more, four more votes for Biden than Trump. Even though the people who were counting lost count, I watched them hand count them. I watched them take pictures of them. I watched them weigh the ballots. Okay. And then bought a separate machine just to count them again. Do I believe they found 364? Yeah, I guess I do. But I know that they lost control because they were idiots. The guy who ran this thing, uh, this audit, he was from uh, Florida. And before he came over, somebody paid off his house for $400,000. He has 12 kids and he's 40 some years old. So you can tell he's probably a wing nut, which he was, okay? He made a movie and he tried to hide in the movie. And guess what his name was? A nine, like two and nine, okay? You know, it, it's just really something else. But anyway, we have a bill called 2780 that me and Ken Bennett wrote. I got documents here. Uh, it has two different methods in it because, you know, in Maricopa County, they said they had an 80% turnout and our voter database was 2.6 million voters. We are the second largest county in the United States when it comes to elections. It wasn't 2.6 million people who could possibly vote. It was 2.85 million because they like they hit 285,000 people because they're getting ready to be pushed off the list. It's called the inactive list, but they show up. So what does that do? It causes big conspiracies. All of a sudden we have precincts that have 100% turnout. How did that happen? It's impossible, they say. Then they say, look at all these ghost voters. They claim there was 93,000 ghost voters. Those ghost voters came off the inactive list. We are demanding that before an election, 10 days, they're going to have to release everybody who can vote. And then another list of who voted. Note all your information, just your name and your address. If you're a voter who's a judge, well, we'll just put a blank there or whatever. But we're trying to take conspiracies off the table and use facts. So anyway, uh, we think we got a really great chance. And we're hoping... That if this bill passes, and it's not all the way there, but it's already passed the House, it's already in the Senate, it's already passed one committee, two more, it goes to the governor's desk to be signed, it looks good. Believe it or not, me getting involved with those Republicans, this is unbelievable. I didn't get one vote from the Democratic Party in the House. 31 votes came from Republicans. Right now, the Senate has 16 Republicans and 14 Democrats. I know that I have the 16 votes. Now I'm working with Mimi and progressive uh, America, Democrats of America because what I really need is this thing to pass with really big partisan numbers. A lot of Democrats, a lot of Republicans because what we are doing is that we went from a fraud it, and now we're proposing the Arizona miracle that we never have to do a $9 million audit again paid by Republicans, by the way. Uh, they only hustle 400 million nationally, okay? It's a grifter movement. It's awful to see what's happening. A lot of these grifters are like dope dealers. You take them off the corner, they bring another one right in. Okay? It's just incredible. But if we pass this, uh, we hope to be able to launch it nationally because our country deserves elections that are transparent, trackable, publicly verified. In fact, elections are no good unless they're transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. Let's get those 80 million people back in. And, you know, in closing, I just want to say one other thing is that it's really great to be here with a lot of great people. You can feel the energy of activism to be here with Danny Sheehan, Mimi, uh, Joel and Harvey and everybody here. It's a great thing. And, you know, I'm a very stressed person by my work. OK, because the responsibility and sometimes I have to make decisions. And I want you to know in my wall, in my house, you know. When I get really stressed, I meditate and I use the Lakota prayer. And I just want to end with that Lakota prayer. Great mystery. Teach me how to trust my heart, my mind, my intuition, my inner knowing. 
the sense of my body, the blessing of my spirit. Teach me to trust these things so that I may enter my sacred space and love beyond my fear. Whoa, those are big words, aren't they? <laughs> Loving beyond our fear. And thus walk in the balance with the passing of each glorious sun. I am glad to be here today and be with you all. Thank you very much. Oh, Wow, this is a guy who's really made a tangible difference in the world. This is about as great a crowd as you could ever hope for at any event. I mean, the quality uh, is fantastic. And we owe the whole event to Myla Reeson here. Myla has done all the logistics, as they say, the tables and chairs and, and all the food. And, just, she's, and she's also a truly great activist. Myla, come on.